<laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to try this now again. Okay, exponential log rhythmic and logistic functions. So we're going to learn about exponential functions, E, logistic functions. And logistic functions are the ones that make a graph like this. We learned them. Those are one of those 12 basic graphs we learned at the start of the year. We're going to hit those more in the population model. Okay. So an exponential function has to be f of x equals a b to the x. You have to have the variable up there, okay? So, so we said f of x equals 3x was an exponential function. f of x equals 6x to the negative fourth is not. That's a power function. f of x equals negative 2 times 1.5 to the x is an exponential function. Let's do another one. Um, ooh, there's one. h of x equals 7 times 2 to the negative x. Is that an exponential function? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is. It can have a negative in front of the x, okay, and still be an exponential function. What about this one? f of x equals 5 times 6 to the pi function. Is that an exponential function? No, because that would be called a constant function. Okay? Because it will not change. Okay? It doesn't change at all. It's a constant number. 5 times 6 to the pi power is just a number. And that is it. All right. So we got to figure out how to find an exponential function. Okay? So let's take this first one. Okay, now, whoa, f of x equals a b to the x power, right? Okay, so this is your x. So a b to the zero power is going to equal four, and a b to the one is going to equal 12. Does everybody see that? If x is zero and if x is one, we're going to equal 4 and 12, okay? So now I'm going to solve those two equations simultaneously, okay? What's anything to the zero power equal to? Come on, what's anything to the zero power? 1. 4 to the zero is 1. 12 to the zero is 1. 12 million to the zero is 1. Everything to the zero power is 1. So a times 1 equals 4. So what does a equal? 4. So 4b to the first equals 12, right? So b must equal 3. So this is 4 times 3 to the x equals whatever we get. That's our function. So 4 times 3 to the 0 is 4. 4 times 3 to the 1 is 12. 4 times 3 to the 2, put 2 in there. 3 to the 2 is 9 times 4 is 36. Hey, that works. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, now what do you notice? 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So what is 3? It is the B, right? So if you see 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, what do you think that is? the b. So this would be f of x equals, okay, f to the zero, or if it's zero, what is that number? That's going to be your a. So it's eight times one-fourth to the x. Let's try that. Eight times one-fourth to the zero power is eight. Eight times one-fourth to the first is 8 times 1 fourth, which is 2. 8 times 1 fourth to the second. 1 fourth to the second is 1 16th. 1 16th times 8 is 1 half. It works. So, where a, b to the x equals 0, you can find a. And then how much it changes, you can find b. And so they just explained all that on this slide. Okay, exponential growth and decay. If B is bigger than 1, then it's an exponential growth 
function like 4 times 3 to the x is growth. 4 times 1 half to the x is decay. Okay? Because b is in between 0 and 1. Okay? You will also have decay when you have something like 4 times 3 to the negative x. Because what is that really? Well, that is really 4 times 3 to the negative 1 times x. And what's 3 to the negative 1? 1 third. 4 times 3, 4 times 1 third to the x. So that is why this is decay. Okay? That is why this is decay. But if we have a positive number to a positive exponent, and the number in front is positive, that's a growth function. Okay, so we're going to look at different trig or different exponential function. And today we're going to do a lot of transforming of graphs. Okay, so g of x equals 2 to the x minus 1. Okay, what's going to happen there? What's going to happen to the graph? Well, you're going to take 2 to the x and you're going to move it. How are we going to move it? Well, what happens when we do something inside parentheses? It moves it to the right or left or up or down? Right or left. Okay, so this is like what's happening inside of the parentheses. If I go x minus 1, does that move it to the left or move it to the right? To the right by 1. Okay. If we multiply it times a negative x, that will flip it. And then this one, we're going to... When we multiply in front, it's going to stretch it vertically. All right. So if we look at the solution of g of x equals 2 to the x minus 1. We take 2 to the x and move it 1 to the right. Okay, so that's what the graph will look like. If we take 2 to the at negative x, we're going to translate across the y-axis. So it's going to look like that. So 2 to the negative x, instead of being a growth function like 2 to the x is, 2 to the negative x is a decay function. It'll go down as we go along. And 3 times 2 to the x is 2 to the x, and then we stretch it vertically by a factor of 3. So we stretch up by a factor of 3. Everything's 3 times higher than what it was. Okay? 3 times higher. All right. E. Calculators out, please. Okay, let's look at this limit. If I put in a 1 here, what am I going to get? 1 plus 1 over 1 is 2 to the first power is 2. So if I put in a 1, I get 2. If I put in a 2, I get 1 plus 1 half, which is 1 and a half to the second power. What's 1.5 to the second power? 2.25. If I put in a 10, I'm going to jump up to 10 really quick. 1 plus 1 tenth is 1 plus 0 0.1 because 1 tenth is 0 0.1. So it's 1.1 to the 10th power. What's 1.1 to the 10th power? Give me four decimal places. 2.5931. Right? We're going to jump all the way up to 100. So 1 over 100 is 1.01. So 1.01 to the hundredth power. 2.7 something? Uh-huh. 
I don't have a calculator in front of me. Give it to me. 2.7. Good enough. Okay. Let's do 1,000. So 1.001 to the 1,000th power. 2.7. One six nine? Yeah. Ten thousand. Two point seven. One eight one. Okay, now we're getting let's do a million. So a million would be one point zero 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 one to the one millionth power would it be one eight two or one eight three one eight three okay and as you keep getting as you keep going up what happens to this number it goes up but then it doesn't go up by much further, does it? Okay, it's going to hit a limit. It's going to go up like this and kind of hit a horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote for this E function is 2.718284589045, yada, yada, yada. Okay. It's easy to remember that number because I'm a history buff, okay? And this is called Euler's number, okay? Do you know how I remember 2.718281828459045? Oh. President Andrew Jackson and President Garfield. President Andrew Jackson was the what president of the United States? The what? Oh, Shanty. Let's go back to history and find out. He was not the 27th. He was way back in the 1800s. Wait, who, who was it? Andrew Jackson. The seventh president of the United States. Number seven. He was Andrew Jackson. Mr. Kors talked about Andrew Jackson a lot. I mean, he spent like a whole week on Andrew Jackson. No, it's a whole chapter. Yeah, the Jacksonian era. Yeah. 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 So he spent some time on Andrew That's Jackson. So pretty important president. Now, how many terms did Andrew Jackson serve? I guess one. I'm guessing two. Yeah, two. So he was the seventh president of the United States. He served two terms. When was he first elected to the presidency? What'd you say? All right. 1828. Now, there's this other president, President Garfield. Okay? He was kind of a closet mathematician. He liked to do geometry proofs. He would even prove right triangles. What one right triangle proof do you think he did? 4590 45 triangle. There we go. 2.718281828459045. If you type E to the first power in your calculator, which is a second natural log button, is E, and you take it to the first power, what do you get? 2.718281828459045. And it keeps going on your calculator past that, doesn't it, or not? No? Uh, it stops a little earlier than that. All right. So that is an exponential function if um, for E. So things in nature actually follow the exponential function. Money, interest follows the exponential function if it's compounded continuously, okay? It's really interesting how all that works. All right, 
So an exponential function in the form of ab to the x is a times e to the kx. Okay? So if k is bigger than 0, it's an exponential growth. If k is less than 0, it's an exponential decay, positive or negative. Okay? So here's an exponential growth function. Okay? That's what you want your money to do. Okay? Here's an exponential decay function. Okay. So transforming graphs again. If we do it as an exponent, it's like it's in parentheses. What do you think will happen to the x plus 2 graph? Move to the left by 2. Negative e to the negative x. If they're both negative, we're going to reflect around both the x-axis and the y-axis. This reflects around the y-axis. This will reflect around the x-axis. And this one will move the graph where? Down one. Down one. Good job, people. So, e to the x plus 2, 2 units to the left, like we said. Negative e to the negative x reflect around the y and then the x. Ooh, just the x-axis. Well, hmm, that seems strange. And then this one moves it down by one. Okay. Now this is what a logistic function looks like. Okay. These are the logistic functions. And we did not tackle these at all in Algebra 2. You never touch these in Algebra 2 as far as I know of. No, I didn't end the slideshow. All right. So let's take a logistic function like f of x equals 8 over 1 plus 3 times 0 0.7 to the x power. Okay. That's a logistic function. Let's find the y-intercept. How would we find the y-intercept? How do you, where's the y-intercept at? When x equals zero, okay? So you put zero in for x. What's 0.7 to the zero power? One. What's three times one? Three. What's one plus three? Four. What's eight divided by four? Two. So 0, 2 would be the y-intercept there. Okay? Somebody graph this on your graphing calculator. It makes kind of an S, doesn't it? It goes like this, crosses at 0, 2, goes up, and goes like this. Okay, it makes two horizontal asymptotes. Where are the two horizontal asymptotes? You have a horizontal asymptote up there at y equals. Can anybody find it on the graphing calculator? It's approximately. Eight. And down here, what's our horizontal asymptote? Y equals zero. Okay, Y equals zero. All right, I have one more. Um, if we have F of X equals 20 over one plus two E, to the negative <coughs> 3x power. All right. So, where's the y-intercept? What's e to the 0 power? What's anything to the 0 power? 1. What's 2 times 1? 
2 was 2 plus 1. 3 was 20 divided by 3. Six and point six point six repeating or six and two thirds. Right? Okay, so our y intercept is at zero, six and two thirds. If you would graph this, what is going to be your horizontal asymptotes? At zero and where else? 20. These are going to be our horizontal asymptotes. Hmm. I see a 20 and a 20. And an 8 and an 8. Hmm. Something that you might want to put in your brains a little bit. Okay. So, that's a little bit about what we're doing today. You will also have a population question where you just have to put in the numbers to figure out the population growth. Okay, it should be fairly straightforward. So, um, there you go. I am going to put out your assignment. Only one assignment today. Only one assignment today.